Welcome to part 5 of lecture 4 of block body aerodynamics. So now let's look, talk a little bit more about the cooling air, right? This cooling air is an, ad, is an added drag source. It's basically a uh, drag equivalent with the internal flow in the vehicle. So the flow is going through the engine compartment, supplying cooling air to the brakes, the transmission, everything uh, that needs cooling. Um, and we can think about this basically as the extra drag that we have if that front grill that lets that air in is open compared to if it was closed. Usually um, you get up to about 0.04 additional drag coefficient from do the, doing this. So it's maybe 5 to 10% of the overall drag. So it's not huge, but it's not insignificant. There's four main components of this cooling air drag. So there's sort of losses incident on the cooler grill. Uh, there's pressure loss in the radiator and the engine compartment. Uh, there's impact and mixing loss uh, at the outlet. And there's the interactions with the external flow, especially around the front wheels. So the cooling system needs to have adequate flow to, to function properly, right? You got to cool off the engine block, even in worst case scenarios like high engine power output, slowly going up a hill with a heavily loaded vehicle, pulling a trailer, or idling right after doing heavy full load driving. Ideally, you'd like your cooling flow not to depend on how fast you're driving your car around. So to achieve this, um, there's always a cooling fan that draws in extra cooling flow when required at uh, lower driving speed. Normally, we want that flow through the radiator to be somewhere between 20 and 25% of the speed that the vehicle is moving at. We can carefully design inlets to uh, these systems to minimize the, their loss. And if you streamline the inlet, you can reduce the inlet loss by up to 10 times compared to a sharp edge inlet. So you can make this be a pretty small factor. The biggest contributor uh, is the, the radiator where there's going to be a big pressure loss uh, to, that's going to contribute to drag uh, because you've got compact geometry and non-uniform flow which tend to increase the losses. Um, and the stagnation pressure loss ends up being governed by the geometry of the radiator and the flow uh, within it. The flow eventually has to leave the uh, underside of the vehicle um, or the, sorry, the inside of the vehicle under the hood and uh, when that happens and it uh, rejoins the main flow, there's mixing and the mixing loss also contributes to the drag. Basically any difference between the velocity, magnitude and direction when the flow exits the internal compartment uh, and the external flow there is going to yield some kind of momentum loss. And the exact way you do that, sort of where you have that exit flow come out, has a big impact on how much this contributes to the overall drag. Um, and we can see sort of four different designs here. Um, if we just sort of pull it in and kind of let it go wherever, uh, this can yield up to sort of an increase uh, in drag of, uh, of, of 0.025. Um, if we sort of route it out the sides around the wheel, it's 0.02. Um, if we pull in from the bottom and, and push out at the top, it's only uh, 0.01. Uh, and if we do the opposite and put it on the top and push it on the bottom, it's again 0.02. So you can see that you know there's there's a factor of two and a half here in sort of the drag associated with this, just based on the choice of how we do this. And so the the interaction with the surrounding uh, flow is the final uh, cooling drag source. So the external flow is different because of the fact that the cooling flow is happening. Um, mostly this is affecting the front end region of the vehicle and this drag quote unquote source can be negative. Um, so we, we could actually prevent an external flow separation that might otherwise have happened by sucking in some flow. Um, but because modern vehicle vehicles tend to have very streamlined front ends, this doesn't tend to be a factor in passenger cars anymore. So. Control volume analysis um, of the flow through the cooling compartment can be used to uh, get an idea of how the, the parameters that affect the design of the cooling compartment affect the amount of additional drag that is produced. So if we have the flow exiting at some point A after coming in from the free stream, um, so it has a velocity at A, there's an exit area, and there's a pressure there, um, and the pressure there corresponds to the uh, external uh, flow velocity 
and this, this flows at some angle alpha relative to the horizontal. Um, then here's the radiator, and we have a velocity at the radiator, um, an area, cross-sectional area there, and some loss coefficient. Uh, the, this is sort of gives an overall summary. If we look at the, the additional drag force, um, this can be expressed in terms of the things here. And I'm going to br uh, bring up some notes where I'll go through this in more detail in a moment. Uh, and we can also look at a lift force effect, but we're going to be primarily focused on the drag. So when you put it all together, you can get an expression for the delta drag coefficient um, using the integral momentum theorem and we can get the drag change. So we can get a final equation for the delta CD. Um, and the things that we can see from this are that a large radiator area, AK, is uh, desirable. Um, and that obviously if we lower the loss coefficient, that's good too. Um, how you obtain this result is not super trivial. Um, I'll post the derivation to Blackboard with the notes for today, but I'll also bring it up uh, now and have a quick look at it. All right, so let's go through uh, how we get this extra drag coefficient related to the cooling flow. Um, so I'm just going to write down what we've got here first. So first, um, from the free stream condition to the inlet to the radiator, we can consider the flow to be lossless. And so we can use Bernoulli's equation there to uh, say that the total pressure is constant. So P plus one half rho V squared is, a is equal to P plus one half rho V squared at the two points. There's a pressure drop across the radiator. This is given by the loss coefficient uh, times the dynamic pressure at, th at the radiator. Um, this is really a stagnation pressure drop, but the area is constant. So the static pressure drop equals the total pressure drop. And then we also can then use the Bernoulli equation from the radiator to the exit because we're not considering a fan here. Um, so then we need those three equations as well as mass conservation and the momentum equation. So for mass, we know that uh, the sort of free stream area associated with the inlet stream tube times the velocity there is equal to the area of the radiator times the velocity there, which is equal to the area of the exit times the velocity there. And if we look at the x component of momentum, right, the change in the uh, force in the x direction compared to if the flow wasn't there is going to be given basically by the extra contributions of just that internal flow. So this is negative rho uh, v infinity and um, we, we should really be sort of v infinity uh, a infinity, but we can use our mass conservation to sub in a k v k here. And then we have rho v a uh, cos alpha. Uh, times VK, AK, again, where this really should be AA, VA here, but we've substituted in that this is AK, VK. We can simplify that and use the definition of drag coefficient to just reorganize and end up coming with, up with this equation that the delta CD is 2 times AK over AX um, times uh, VK over V infinity uh, times 1 minus VA over V infinity cos alpha. Now, our, our definition of pressure coefficient, right, is CP is P minus P infinity over one half rho V squared. Um, and if we, we can use equation four, sorry, this, this is equation four. Now, so the delta CD here, we've just introduced an extra term and, and canceled things out. So we've sort of not changed the definition. And the reason is because uh, we had a different reference area before. So we just need sort of the x over v infinity, sorry, k over v infinity, uh, and v, v over v infinity is um, related to this pressure drop and sort of where again we're just manipulating the momentum equation here. This looks like a pressure coefficient when I rearrange. So I get a term that has to do with sort of mass conservation and a term that has to do with the pressure change. Um, and I can, again, use equation 2 to, to substitute in here. And uh, I end up with, uh, at the end of the day, sort of an equation for VA over V infinity in terms of all the other parameters. I can use equation 1, put that in, 
substitute that inside, and then I'm going to get another V over V infinity on the other side. I have, then have to rearrange, and at the end of the day, finally get an equation for V over V infinity, which is 1 o minus Cp at point A um, over 1 plus the loss coefficient times AK over, uh, A over AK squared, which when substituted back into equation 4 gives the answer that we are seeking here. So the additional drag versus loss that we get from this is it can be visualized versus the product uh, uh, of loss coefficient times a over a k, and basically the drag rises up to a value of one for this, where we have sort of really low friction loss, and then it starts dropping. This is assuming a 45 degree outward angle. At the upper limit where this thing starts going to infinity, there's basically no flow through the uh, internal cooling channels. We can also act, if we have a zero outlet angle, um, which reduces mixing loss, we can actually get a drag reduction associated with this cooling flow, um, right? So we increase the outlet velocity by reducing the pressure coefficient at A or reducing the loss coefficient. So that's one way how we would move along this axis. And we see that if the velocity at A gets high enough, basically gets higher than V infinity, then all of a sudden the delta CD becomes negative. So this tells us it's best to, lo best to locate that outlet at the vehicle rear or at the sides where and minimize the angle and the pressure coefficient at the exit location um, because it'll allow us to uh, minimize the drag penalty or maybe even get a drag benefit.